Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radi and here aboard USS Gerald R. Ford, the U.S. Navy's newest aircraft carrier under trials now off the Virginia coast. Uh, it's an honor to be aboard with Hondo Gertz, uh, Navy's acquisition executive, uh, or I should say the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research Development uh, and Acquisition. Hondo, thanks so much for bringing reporters out. Uh, you've been nothing but uh, communicative and uh, very, very open with us. Uh, one of the challenges, you know, there's a lot of myth built up around the ship. Uh, around what problems it's got and everything else. And there's also a lot of discussion in Washington as if this was uh, a new problem, especially when Spe Secretary Spencer started talking about it. There weren't people visiting the ship. How do you answer those people who suggest that actually this is kind of a recent effort that spans over the last couple of months to get this ship ready and address its challenges? Uh, because I know that you've been working this problem. How much activity has been going on? Because this is a little bit like a like duck and water in some cases. You guys started talking about it a little bit more, but the effort's been ongoing. Talk to us about that continuum you guys have been on. So, so we've been working on this ship, you know, for a long time. But I would say, you know, coming out of our post shakedown availability, there's a renewed sense of urgency. Uh, we're getting the ship ready for war. Uh, there's airplanes flying on it. You can you know, talk to any sailor on the ship. They're proud of the ship. And we had to transition from that ship in construction to ship getting ready for war. And I think that's the sense. It wasn't that folks weren't working on it or we weren't working hard on it, but you've really now got the ship, the shipyard, uh, everybody working the air wing, everybody working now to get this ship ready for its first deployment. Um, can you help us separate what's fact from fiction, right? The post shakedown availability was very, very important. Uh, my colleague Chris Cavos wrote about the arresting gear uh, being sent back to General Atomics, for example, for a full recondition coming back on the ship. There's speculation about whether or not one or one and a half engines were replaced as part of that uh, because there were some challenges. Uh, all new plant, all new reactor, all new electrical distribution system, and this ship is north of 100 megawatts of uh, installed power. Um, Talk to us a little bit about the fact and the fiction. Everybody talks about the elevators. You guys are working on getting all 11 of those working. But sift the fact and the fiction. You know, is this ship going to be, whether it's from a propulsion standpoint or a catapult uh, standpoint, going to do the job that the Navy wants it to do? Yeah, so fact, it's a lead ship. Fact is, we continue to grow capability of the ship from initial design. We find things we need to fix. Fact is, we've got sailors here getting ready for deployment. So anybody who doesn't believe this ship is all about getting ready for war, that it's the most lethal carrier we've ever designed, that it's the most capable carrier we've ever designed, I welcome to come on board the ship. Because I think when you talk to sailors and you see everybody working hard, and you see everybody focused on their mission, whatever their part is, whether you're the shipyard, or the sailors here, or air crew, uh, everybody is working together with one focus, and that focus is get the ship ready for war. Um, when you, are you convinced that whether it's for propulsion or for anything else, this ship is going to be up to that standard? Because at the end of the day, if it's not, sailors are going to have to pay the price. Uh, John F. Kennedy had a bad shipyard availability, and that ship, you know, sailors had to work double time on that ship to keep her available. It's not that she wasn't ready for war, she actually went to war, but it was a lot harder to maintain. Are you convinced that this ship is going to have that kind of capability in a way that's not going to break sailors? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, sailor, the Navy leadership's never going to break faith with the sailors that we don't field something that's capable, safe, and effective. Uh, the propulsion system, the main, one of the main things in our post shakedown availability was get the propulsion system tuned up. It has been working like, uh, like a dream. There is, you know, again, we're training a lot of new folks on new systems. Propulsion system, solid. Ship system, solid. We're now getting the air deck uh, ready to go. Uh, we've put airplanes on this ship who have never flown on off it. Solid. Right now, another 100 cats and traps since we've left. Uh, we'll get some more of those in, and then by the time we're done with this uh, at sea, all of the fleet aircraft that were for its initial deployment will be certified and available for the crew. Then we'll turn into running the, in all the aircraft systems at rate. So right now our focus is making sure uh, we can get each of the fleet aircraft on the air, on and off the carrier. That's going well. Now we'll then have to then turn it into a complete warship with uh, operating at kinds of sorty generations we want. We'll grow that over this spring. Uh, but I can tell you with clear certainty, this system, the systems are working the way we want them to work. Uh, we've got to continue to mature and make them reliable, get uh, the training uh, packages all together, certify those sailors. Part of this uh, pdt and phase is all about certifying all the systems and getting all the training built 
right? So we can create the pipelines. It's the first ever, and so some of this is training sailors as we're using it. Part of their job is create that training material for the sailors that follow them so that we can create the pipeline as we build this new class of aircraft carrier. Um, and electrical systems also are up to snuff from your standpoint? Yep, they're all checking out right now. Uh, again, we'll go up deck here in a few minutes and watch uh, Hornets and uh, Growlers taking off and landing and uh, EMALs launching airplanes and AAG catching airplanes. Radar's been solid. Uh, radar's been actually uh, unbelievably stable. Uh, that was a concern many folks had and, uh, and that DVR system is working well. Still got a little work to do to fix the, uh, get the rest of the elevators up and running. Uh, we knew that going in, um, but all the systems are operating as we've expected and the crew is doing a magnificent job taking this new equipment and not just repeating what we've done in Nimitz, but more importantly, creating what is Ford class. Uh, that's right, because obviously uh, uh, USS uh, John F. Kennedy is in construction, as is the new Enterprise CVN-80, uh, mm -hmm. uh, even though the old Enterprise is, uh, uh, I was going to ask you about that, but I'll ask you when we get back to Washington, because there's nothing that shortens an interview uh, than actually having fighter jets coming onto a, an aircraft carrier. Um, let me ask you about when this ship is going to be ready for the F-35. Nimitz, the oldest carrier in the fleet, uh, supposed to be retired in four years, but is off the Pacific coast right now doing trials with the F-35 Charlie. Mm -hmm. uh, Vincent is going to be the first ship that deploys with that capability. Uh, when is that aircraft going to start operating off of this ship and go through its qualification phase? Yeah, so because you guys got to do that before you design, as you're designing that next generation air wing for these ships. Yeah, certainly. So we've had a very structured plan for F-35 and uh, four class carriers as we've gone through. So 80 and 81, that the, the mods for F-35 are being designed. as so those ships will come out with the F-35 mods. Uh, 79, we were going to do it in a post delivery mod. Uh, based on the congressional language, looks like we'll do that uh, in construction. And then 78, we'll uh, do it in one of its uh, modifications down the road. But I would say there's nothing inherently different with the ship in terms of ability to launch and catch F-35s. Most of the work on F-35 are some specifics associated with that particular weapon system, particularly the comms it needs and some of the classified spaces. So it's not an inherent limitation. Now there's the sound of freedom. Now we're talking. Hondo, thanks very, very much. We really appreciate it and look forward to talking to you on the beach. Let's thanks go watch the EFs. Got it, absolutely. Right.